Okay, let's kick this off. Uh, welcome back to the vlog. Uh, earlier this week, I put out a little video um, asking for people's response and thoughts on doing a series of working on and doing some mods and little build stuff on a motorcycle uh, within the confines of limited space. See, I live in a city and I've always lived in the city and I know that there's a lot of motorcyclists out there that live in a very similar situation to, to my wife and I. We rent a parking space, it's obviously the space right behind us, um, where we store our motorcycles, our car, and we've got a little bit of storage. So this is how I work on our motorcycles and I figured Let's see if we could do a little series, a little video to maybe maybe inspire other people um, to do the work that they want to do and the customizations they want to do and see what they can accomplish in the confines of a small space and show that you don't need a attached garage or a shed behind your house and you don't necessarily need to send your bike off to a shop to have every bit of work done. I just like to work on my own things and I get a, a certain level of, of satisfaction of doing the work myself. Not to mention it saves me a great deal of money which allows me to do other things. So I want to put a series together to see if, uh, if maybe other people can take some, some pointers from it and maybe get inspired and do some of the work themselves from that. So this is the kickoff to that video. We're gonna break up this kickoff video into a few spots. I'll put some timestamps below, so if you wanna to jump to just those spots, feel free to. Um, uh, if you want to watch the whole video all the way through, that would be really, really helpful for, for me and the channel also. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started. All right, let me give you a, a brief rundown of the setup of the garage. Uh, we rent. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, in our spot, we store our car and three motorcycles, and we've got a couple cabinets in the back. Um, normally, we will probably only have two motorcycles in there. We're storing one for a friend over the winter. The garage is attached to the building that we live in. Um, it's kind of an odd setup. There are only about 14 spots in the garage, so it's not a huge garage, but there is a lot of traffic coming in and out of the garage because of the way it is set up. Now, I don't know how against the rules what I am doing really is. I know that it's very, very frowned upon about doing any work, but I have spent the better part of this year really trying to get to know our neighbors and get to know people within the garage and within our building. I just, I just like to know my neighbors and I think that it's just better for the community when when you try to reach out and just get to know people a little bit better. So through that and through just making conversation I have gotten a feel for how things work in the garage and the the culture in the garage. The The real nice thing is, let me show you this, is the spot that I'm working in is really tucked into the corner here. So as people drive up the garage, um, just between that wall and that silver SUV thing, uh, most of them turn right. And if you're walking through the garage, they walk out to the right. So being tucked in this corner is great because if I'm doing anything and I need to be quiet because I don't want to draw attention, I can just be quiet. Um, people don't usually come over and bother or anything like that. So that's the setup of the garage space. Okay, to be 100% transparent with everybody, I think it's important to call out some of my experiences. I was a mechanic for many, many years. I went to school to be a mechanic. I then worked in automotive repair shops for a number of years before moving into racing cars. I raced cars for close to a decade. I built engines, built the cars, maintained all of our transport equipment. I was also a custom car builder for a little while where I did paint and body work and other metal fabrication and everything that goes along with that. I also never leave anything stock. So from an early age, every vehicle that I've ever had, I've always tinkered on and done stuff to make it my own. Um, 
I just want to call that out so that we're all on the same page as we move through it. Let's talk about tools. Now, I have limited tools. They are tools that I have kind of amassed over the years, and a lot of them I brought with me when we moved here from New York. Mainly, I am going to try to do everything that I can with this tool roll. This is a tool roll that I put together to take on road trips with us, so that if anything happened, I could do the majority of what needed to be done on our bikes um, on the side of the road. I'll, I'll go over this tool roll in more detail later. Um, in addition to that, I have uh, a couple stands. I have a jack stand that I purchased for $50 or 50 euros off of Market Plots, which is the Netherlands version of Craigslist. I also have a uh, device called a motor mover. Um, think of it as a wheel chalk with wheels on it so that, uh, so that you can roll it around. That tool has been, it's been priceless. Uh, being in such a confined spot, having to move vehicles around and move motorcycles around, that thing has been a lifesaver. It also stands the bike up perfectly straight and allows me to move it in and out quickly. Um, past that, if I need any specialty tool, I will make sure to call it out in the video and I'll try to share a link to it and a price to it. Uh, I'm hoping to do most everything that I want to do to this motorcycle using just common tools that most people will have laying around or be able to obtain relatively inexpensive and should have anyway. Um, I have no welder, I have no plasma cutter, I, I don't have a hydraulic lift, I don't have any air tools or anything like that. This is all hand tools. I'm probably gonna need a soldering iron and some bigger sockets to get some of the stuff off, but I'll call all of that out as, uh, as we use them. Okay, so the bike that is going to be used for this whole series. It is a 2013 Triumph Thruxton. Uh, the bike was sold originally in uh, the Northeast, I believe Connecticut. I bought it from a friend of mine here in the Netherlands. Uh, the whole process of buying it from him took over six months. It was such a fiasco. I've had the bike now for the majority of last riding season and then all winter. It is a, I mean, it's a great bike. It runs amazingly well. I don't know how many kilometers are on it and the battery's disconnected. So I can't even look that up right now, but I'll, I'll get back to you on that. But overall, the bike has been well maintained. I don't know exactly what has been done to the bike. There has been some modifications already done, like the airbox delete was done, the LED turn signals were put on, there's an exhaust on it. I don't know much else of what was previously done, so we're going to be figuring that out as we go through it. But in a nutshell, that's the bike. Okay, so what's the plan for this bike? Let me, let me just kick off by saying there is nothing wrong with this bike the way it sits. Triumph did an amazing job designing and building this bike, and it is a complete head turner. Everywhere we go, people come up and they comment on it and they ask questions about it. So as it sits, it is an amazing bike. Not only that, but it also rides extremely, extremely well. But they're also a dime a dozen. Uh, the Thruxton is very, very popular over here. All the Bonneville and Thruxtons and Street Twins and that whole twin series of bikes is very popular over here. So I don't want a dime a dozen bike. Um, in addition, it is, it's green and gold. Neither one of those are colors that I really like very much. Uh, so I kind of want to change it up. It also has a lot of chrome on it, and I don't like chrome. I've just never been a huge chrome fan. So I want to make it my own, but I want to do so in a very budget-friendly way. 
Now, I don't have any problem with spending money where money needs to be spent, but I also don't want to just spend money to spend money. I don't want to just buy the most expensive parts out there just to say I have them. So I want to approach this in a budget conscious way because that's how most people will do it. I'm going to also do it in stages because I don't want it to hit my bank account or my credit card all at once. So what do I have planned for the bike? Well, one of the first things that I want to do is I want to clean up the this area here. I want, I want to clean up that battery box area. Now it had the air box removal, so it's got the pod filters and that looks great, but I don't want the side covers and I want to clean that up. And I've got some plans to do that, but that's going to be a fairly labor intensive aspect. In addition, I want to get rid of some of the chrome. So it has chrome fork covers that the headlights mount to. I want to black those out. I want to black out the headlight. Eventually I want to replace the headlight, but that's a fairly expensive project, so first we're going to black it out. Uh, there's also some heel guards and some other minor bolt-on chrome and silver stuff that will black out. I'm going to use Plasti Dip for most of it because I have experience with the product. In addition to that, I'm going to do something about the color. Originally I was going to just sand the tank down and do this raw metal look because there is some damage to it, but then I came across a smoking deal on a beautiful tank, so we're going to swap the tank out. Eventually I want to replace the seat, but that's way down the road because those are very expensive. I have to rewrap the exhaust because the bike has been down before and the wrapping is all kind of fraying and tearing off on that aspect of it. I want to black out part of the engine, but again, engine covers are super expensive for this bike and it's really hard to find used good clutch sides. Now, I don't want you to think that it's all just cosmetics. I'm going to be doing some other rideability stuff. Uh, the bikes stumble a little bit at low RPM and I want to address that tuning issue. In addition, I need to do some clutch work. See, I only have three fingers on my clutch hand that can engage the clutch and only two of those actually work and it's a very heavy clutch so um, after long days of riding it really creates some issues for me especially when it's a little bit colder out so I'm going to look into converting it to a hydraulic clutch. I've already done some mods to the motorcycle. I replaced the handlebars for a little bit more of a drag bar, minor sweep back in black. I, I moved the ignition switch to the side because it just cleaned up the bike a little bit. I switched from a dual gauge to a single gauge lie flat uh, and that cleaned up the front end a little bit. Uh, it also has bar end mirrors that kind of need to be replaced because the ones I had were very, very inexpensive. But that's overall the plan for the bike. Uh, we're gonna do it in stages, like I said, and we're also gonna nut and bolt it and do the regular maintenance to get it ready for riding season. I'm going to just start diving into it and try to record as much as I can and learn along the way on how to record this stuff, what I can do in the garage, and I hope you guys, I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope you guys follow along. Um, please subscribe and hit that bell. Uh, it helps me know that I'm on the right track and I'm doing stuff that resonates with people. I don't want to just record this stuff for my own prosperity. I want to definitely be helping people along the way. Uh, until the next episode, uh, thanks for watching and uh, let's, uh, let's see how this all goes.